Hi guys, it's Armour28 here on my Minecraft channel and today I'm going to be talking to you about minecart placement. Buckle your seatbelts because we're going on a minecart ride. A few months ago I made a video about a few general purpose entity tricks that can be useful in making compact redstone. It's not a bad video but I thought I would go a bit more into depth with a few of those ideas in this video where I will explain a good deal of my knowledge about the placement of minecarts, particularly in relation to clipping them inside of hoppers. While some of the topics at the start of this video will cover will be useful and are already very common in circuitry, I'll also present a bunch of cool tricks to get some interesting configurations that aren't necessarily going to be immediately too obviously useful. As a result of this, I'll be showing them off in an out of context way without too many examples of their potential uses. If you ever need any of them, you'll probably know. I'll also not be covering the basic minecart placements like this, where the minecart is simply placed between two or four blocks, maybe clipped inside immovable blocks, you just zero tick that piston, or blocks with no collision blocks. They're, they're very simple, and if you watch the rest of this video, they'll be self-explanatory. Instead, I'm going to focus on many different ways of getting minecarts inside of immovable blocks. So there are three main methods and a couple of other ones of getting minecarts inside of immovable blocks. Now this is the best known one, viewers of my channel will be quite familiar with this sort of trick, and that is that a minecart going up or down a slanted rail can go straight through any block, including immovable ones. Um, and the advantage of this trick over some of the other ones is that it exists, the minecart can go at any, diff any possible Y level along here. So we can see this if we put a powered rail here, we can slowly push this down and we can leave it to sit at that point if we want or a bit further down um, so this is where we have tricks like the classic hopper clip that come in to play now if you get something like this now the minecart only went slightly down the rail so it was still inside the hopper but its y level was above 0.5 of a block meaning that it could sit perfectly happily on top of this fence gate and um, from here we can actually um, take advantage of an interesting property of hoppers that I'll be going into in a lot more depth later in the video and that's that the hopper has multiple collision boxes meaning that if you push the um, if you push the minecart up with something less than a block tall such as this soul sand it will actually be able to sit on one of those inner collision boxes and be both supported by the hopper and due to the first rule that I described earlier it will be able to deposit items into the chest, into into the um, into the hopper. So this is very useful because it means that you can then place other things inside of oops, um, in, inside of the same block in which the minecart is. So you could place something like a repeater here, and then get a signal across, and the items will be transferred. As I said, I'll be going into a lot more detail about this exact trick later. So the next method is definitely more limited than the previous one, but it's still pretty cool in its own way. So it involves farmland. So if we have a minecart that is clipped inside of a farmland in such a way that part of its hitbox is above the top of the farmland, then when it converts into a normal dirt, either from random ticks or from a block being placed on top of it, it will teleport to the top of the next block. Uh, now this is a, a bug fix, you can see it on the screen here, um, and so this has been a thing since 1.12. It was to fix players getting glitched inside of uh, in, inside of farmland when it converted, as you can see here. And now this is because farmland changes height when it changes into a dirt, and so it's actually not the only block that can cause this effect. Um, we also have the path block that does it, and I'm also just going, just to show it can go into a movable block, so place an obsidian there. So we can go into there, or even, this one's pretty fun, you can have uh, an end portal frame here, and when you convert this into, when you when you fill it with an eye bender, the hitbox changes, and so the uh, minecart will teleport upwards. Now the reason why this is quite limited is that there's no way of stopping the minecart going all the way to the top of the next block. It is quite uncontrollable in that way, there's no variation in the Y value, no matter what tricks you might try. So it's always going to teleport to the top of the next block. So in terms of hopper base clips, it's not too useful, but um, it's useful in conjunction with other things. Now, one thing about this exact configuration that we were using with the farmland is this slab is kind of inconvenient because um, it means the, the top of the minecart is actually already inside the obsidian, so you might as well have just done a different clip. So the easier way around this is actually to um, and place it instead onto a, a set of three snow layers here. 
Now, three snow layers has a height of 0.25. So when you add the height of the minecart, which is 0.7, you get 0.95. So the minecart is underneath this block, but well, so we can we can place blocks here, but it's above the top of the um, of the farmland. So this will still work, and it will even still work with paths. Just about uh, the hitbox of a path is actually only very slightly above. So you can see 0.93, so it's just working, but it's it's enough. Um, so yes, that's the farmland clip. So this one is actually my personal favourite of all of these tricks. And I found this together with Sydney. So he found the mechanic and then I found the method of recreating it. So we call this a float cart or a floaty cart uh, for reasons we'll see in a second. So, and it's to do with the exact positioning of this minecart. So if we take the um, exact coordinate of it using this command, we can see that uh, it's at very precise coordinates. So I just placed it on a rail and removed the rail. But if I give this piston here, a uh, zero tick or one game tick pulse you see it moves ever so slightly over to the side and if we take the coordinates once again we can see it's been pushed over by one centimeter plus a very very small number so the one centimeter just sort of counteracts the um, uh, the size of the minecart because remember it's only 98 centimeters across so there's a one centimeter gap on the side so by pushing it over by one centimeter it's just off the you know makes up for that gap and then the extra little bit means it's ever so slightly over in the next block. So if I turn my sound up, which I probably should have done before, but oh well, and I try to place a block here. Now normally we wouldn't be able to place a block, but we see we can. But clearly something is a little bit peculiar because we can hear it doesn't make a sound when we place it. It does when we remove it, but not when we place it. And so that's the indication that something a bit weird is happening. And we can actually take an item, we can take items from here despite the fact that we can place blocks on top of it. Uh, and this has some other interesting, um, you know, what's the, what are they called? Other interesting. So this has some other interesting connotations because it means that we can, for example, place a hopper here and then we can push this up and then the, uh, the the hopper here will be able to take the items and it'll be able to come back down again. So you could use the hopper timers or whatever, but it's really cool. And this is to do with a sort of floating point precision error type thing. Uh, and of course, Minecraft doesn't just exist in one dimension, so we can actually get it to float in two directions. And now this will take items from there and we can place immovable blocks on all of these and it will still take it and be able to push up which is really cool. One other cool thing that you can do is actually to get a vertical floaty minecart. That is where you have the, the very top of the minecart ever so slightly above the top of the hopper. You could theoretically get this underneath as well but that is completely pointless. This is no use. But the reason why this is even, even the one above is of limited use is the method. To get a, such a precise Y level you can't use blocks because no such blocks exist with, with those sort of Y levels so instead we need to be using entities and the simplest method I found is to use a wither skeleton. So if we do this and get this in here then what I want to do is get it to sit on a slab inside the minecart. You should probably name it as well so it doesn't despawn. Also, the weather skeleton will suffocate, which is another disadvantage of this. So then, if you just push this over again, and then you make a minecart sit on, on its head, and then we were to take the height of this, we can see that it's at um, 0.3. Now, that is to do with the fact that minecarts are 0.7 7 of a block tall, so the 0.3 counteracts that plus a very, very small number. So we can see the number that the items will go through here, and yet we can place blocks on top. Now this is less use as the other float carts because we can't really move this because it needs to be sitting on the weather skeleton at all times. Um, but it's still potentially useful because you could have this uh, hopper on top of, like on top of your door on the top volume, and this minecart being here shouldn't, at least in my opinion, shouldn't increase the, the volume of the door because Although it's in this block here, 
uh, it doesn't affect anything. You can still place blocks there perfectly fine and push pistons and everything. It doesn't really make a difference, but I'm up to debate on that, but I personally don't think that that counts. So those are the main tricks, but I just wanted to quickly touch on one more, which is to use nether portals. So if I quickly go through here, we can see it requires a, a glitch nether portal like this, which you can achieve using update suppression. And this is one of the reasons I don't think this is too useful a trick, um, because this is a lot of effort to go through, although technically feasible. So the way it works is if we get a minecart here and we send it through the portal, we can see as I summoned in that obsidian here, this minecart summoned all the way down here inside this hopper. But the reason why this isn't too useful is that this sort of configuration could have been achieved using the farmland clip. Uh, and we can actually see it's not very customizable either. So with this command block here, we can summon in a chest minecart um, at any Y level we want and it won't fall because it's got this no gravity tag here. So if, for example, we summon it in at half a block high, like so, and we send it through the portal, we can see that it's right at the bottom of the block. It hasn't maintained its Y level. And this is the same for any Y level that we give it. So if here we decide to give it 0.31, which is like the lowest it can be while still going in the portal, we can see that once again, it's at the bottom of it. And we can use that same command to see here. It's at the bottom of the block. So yeah, this isn't really particularly useful, but it's a it's a nice thing to know. So now I'm going to go on to the reason why we went through all of those ways of getting uh, minecarts into immovable blocks. Um, so what often happens when you have a, an ordinary hopper clip like this in context is there's a high chance there's going to be other immovable blocks around it, whether that be obsidian or more likely droppers or hoppers, or even if you have something like a repeater, because a repeater can't be moved, but it also needs to sit on a block, meaning that if you have this sort of configuration, it's very similar to just having this. And so the chances are you're gonna to have to compete with those things around you. So now what I'm gonna do is go through all of the ways there could be immovable blocks surrounding this hopper and talk about how to place minecarts in those situations. All of them are possible, but some of them later get quite silly and a bit pointless. But that's beside the point. That's pretty. We're gonna. That's what we're gonna do. So there's 127 different positions uh, or combinations because there are seven positions. These ones on the other side don't don't count because my heart can be in, in a max of eight, and so that gives us 127 different. Um, combinations of movable blocks. Don't worry, a lot of them are going to be in groups, so we're not going to go through them one by one. So the easiest one to start with is when we have one here, and that's because nothing changes. We can place the minecart in there just as easily as we did before, and then use the soul sand trick or any other height method that we'll get into in the next section of this video. And there we go, that works. Now, one of the, um, so while we're in this position, what we're gonna do is discuss these. So there are 15 different positions that this that these can be in, or combinations. Um, and what we're gonna do there is, and also let me just place in a, like a feed-in hopper, I guess. Um, just to sort of demonstrate what we're going for. Or if we all want one here. And so now if we want to have any combination of immovable blocks in here, what we're going to do is add a float to this cart. And we can't do that in the normal way, because if we um, just float a cart that's inside a hopper, for some reason it doesn't work. Let me just show you that real quick. I don't know why I got rid of the rail. Oops, that's a repeater. So if we just give this piston here a zero tick, normally that would make it work, but in this case it actually doesn't. It pulls it quite substantially over. So the way we're gonna fix this and make the float work, oops, is to get a chest or a honey block, something with that hitbox, and place it there or there or something. Something where it's in the block behind where the minecart is. And then when we zero tick this, 
it'll push it over a tiny bit and then we take the the position of it we can see that it's 51.00000 and then a small number so that's actually given us the float position and then we can push it up and do whatever we want with it so for this to and for this to work you need to do this And now we can place stuff here and stuff there, and it will go through. Excellent. So that's 16 different combinations that we've covered there. Now let's go on to the next 16. So now we're going to do it with one here. And this is a little bit more complicated um, because now we can't have this. This won't go down. So what we have to do instead is to get the minecart in from underneath. So what we're going to do is place normal rail there and then some power rails. I think it's this many. I think I've actually got, I mean, you can, there's a little bit of a variance in it, but yeah, that will work. And now you can see we can send that through. But you can see it, it does go through too quickly and it skips it. So what you're going to want to do is get a minecart up here. I think it works best for the first minecart, slightly greater inertia. Push it a little bit and then place your other minecart in there and it will push. And you can vary how far it goes in how far the chest minecart goes by the exact positioning of the furnace minecart but it's not an exact science and I just find it really tedious to test so yeah so get the minecart into that position and then we're going to want to sort of place it on something in the meantime I find this easier to do with a flower pot but depending on the exact height you could use a slab in this case it's slightly too low you can see there that the minecart goes slightly too low for it to be a slab but you could also use something like a campfire in this, in this case as well um, and then you want to instant replace this also in that case you can use um, a trick I'll show off later in the 4-8 section of the next section it will be timestamps in the description if you don't understand what I'm talking about but yes so flower pot there and the flower pot is great because it actually can't be pushed and it will break upon trying to be pushed so what we can do is get a soul sand and just push it up and it will break the, salt, break the flower pot immediately and place it into position with the removable block here. Now this is actually one of the most useful of the tricks because, well, it's both the most useful and not the most useful. Let me explain. So a case that often happens is you have a repeater on top of a hopper. That happens in quite a long context and this allows that to be possible because obviously this is not movable. Um, but one of the reasons that is not always going to be that helpful is that it's quite easy to sort of get around this and you can do this for example just by placing a slab or a support minecart it can be anything and then just getting yourself a regular minecart another minecart there and floating it and so now you have a very similar case but it just needs to be supported somehow whether you do that with a slab, another minecart under this chest minecart, it could be anything, but yeah, this is easier to build, but of course it will probably involve more entities and it's easier to break, but yeah, just so you know that exists, it'll probably be easier to do that. Um, yes, and then of course we can apply the float to this to allow it to have immovable blocks in these positions as well. If we just use the chest. And now that gives us another 16 different combinations. And by the way, this is just me cutting in from the edit. The trick to get a minecart when there's a block here is identical to when there's also one here. So this adds double the, uh, double the amount of combinations. This block here being here makes no difference. Okay, so now the next one is quite a lot more complicated. And yeah, it does, it does make life a lot harder and that is to have one in this position. Now the reason why this is so much more difficult is that now we can't have a rail anymore. 
and yeah so that since the rail is our main way of clipping things into hoppers and we can no longer use it we have the only other option which allows us to um, to have specific wire levels and that is a float and unfortunately if we're using a float that means it has to be supported by something else so this can only really be a half clip but yes let's go on to that okay so what we're going to use is a float cart so we're going to first float it and then we're going to use the farmland trick in order to put it inside this obsidian here or any other removable block for the farmland trick to work it needs to be sitting between two different blocks so um, we're going to use a fence here and then afterwards we can push it back using um, a piston. So right here we just want to float this and of course we can put our hopper back here. And then what we want to do is drop this down onto something like a slab. Then we can have our farmland here. In fact, the best thing isn't actually a slab, it's to use the three snow. So, because that, then that's compatible with everything. So three snow layers there. And then we can have our obsidian here. Push this over. And now that is there. Now this isn't yet going to put items into this hopper because it's too low. But to get that, what we can do is push it up with something like a cobble wall. So now that will be able to deposit items. Now, of course, um, we can't actually have it supported on the hopper itself. It needs to be supported by something. Now this could be a whole manner of different things. So you could use something like a cobble ball like this, or you could, for example, if we place this a little bit higher using like a soul sand, like so, then we can obviously get rid of this. And then underneath it, we can place another minecart. Now obviously you could just clip this in, but that can be a bit dangerous. So I'm gonna use the farmland trick again. Uh, So this does turn into a bit of a long process because we then have to push it up two, but whatever. So we want to put it in here and then we're going to drop it onto snow. Actually, that's just going to get it back to the same height. How do we want it? Okay, this is where a slightly annoying process comes through. By the way, can you tell that I have not rehearsed this one? I've never actually had to use this one in a, in a door. I try and avoid it where possible because it's kind of annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna get myself a button here. And then... And then we're just gonna try and place... Oh, if I get rid of that. And one more, like so. And then we'll be able to use a farmland. Obviously, there are probably more efficient ways of doing this, but ah, yeah. Okay, and then we can push this. Oh, oops, my fault. So push that in, and then of course we can then just have this be quartz or something. Push this in. And then we can even, that will then sit on top of the furnace minecart. And then this here is pushed over. So this way we can get across here, like so. Um, it just needs to be supported by something. You can make that a boat, which would probably be quite easy to place. You could spawn in with a dispenser. Uh, it could be any other mob or a minecart or something like a um, fence and of course you could even just leave it sitting over to the side and like have the soul sand there that also works fine and is actually quite a, quite a good way of doing it probably much better than using this minecart but this is the sort of purest form of this trick also uh, of course I just forgot to mention this we can obviously add these ones here 
by simply floating this cart again. So now it will be able to deposit items, hopefully, into there. So, for example, we just block off this one with a furnace. You can see now they go into there. So float, that gives us another 15, and that's all of the selections from this one. So this next one here is actually really hard, and it's completely pointless, and you'll never need it ever, but it's, but it's pretty cool. Um, so what we're gonna want is one where we have this one, and then either here, here, or both, uh, and then also, all of these just add an extra float for those so we're gonna get it so it has so it's in all seven of these and still work now this one is tricky and I'm probably gonna make a mistake in it but that's okay so the base of this is using the um, the vertical float that I showed earlier using a weather skeleton so we're gonna get that straight away but the weather skeleton has a major problem with it which makes it which makes this trick kind of useless. And that is that uh, it will suffocate and take suffocation damage um, from those obsidian blocks. Obviously, if they were um, transparent blocks, it's, it's fine. But for the sake of this, you'd be using obsidian, it doesn't work. So what we're gonna do instead is um, just sort of dissociate um, the weather skeleton from the hopper. And we're going to do that by just stacking more entities that don't suffocate on top of this weather skeleton. Um, one thing I am going to do quickly is just name it. Oh, yeah, helps if I put it in there. And then we're going to put some minecarts on its head. And this hopper won't be there, by the way, it'll be somewhere up there but that doesn't really matter. So we're going to just use furnace minecarts for this. So we want to get, I think it's two right there. So basically if we just stack a bunch and we take the height of, of them can see where it's going to be. So it's just data, get, entity, that one, position, and we can see this is the one which our minecart will be sitting on. So our hopper is actually going to be right here, which is pretty cool. So it's quite a long way down from our floor. Um, but in order to place all those minecarts in, we're going to have to remove some of these and come back to them later. So what we're going to do first is actually position the, our primary minecart, the one which is actually going to do the work. Um, and this is quite simple. So we're going to get it with, we're going to float it in here, oops, like that. And then we're going to push it across into um, a, a chest for now. So then we're going to drop it onto some snow layers, three of them, because of course we are going to be using the uh, farmland trick here. That block is just to destroy the farmland. You don't need to place your removable yet because we'll be able to add that later. Oh, we actually want this one lower, my mistake. And this is so that we can get our obsidian uh, here in place. Okay, so now it is inside the hopper. And then what we're gonna want to do is push it up again using something a bit like a soul sand just to get it really high in the block but not sitting on top of the obsidian. 
Oops. Can't have that block there. Excellent. So now we're going to want to get our minecart in here, which this one's going to sit on. And we're going to do this again with the minecart, with the farm land trick. So we want to get a minecart in between these. Be careful you don't place a rail here because this minecart will clip down onto it and you don't want that. So just push that all the way in. Um, kind of want it to go right to the end. Apparently that's as far as it's going, that's okay. And then we're gonna just reload the world quickly just so that it sits straight. And we can see on the hitboxes, this one here is on top of that, so it's all good. Um, so next what we want is to be able to have it sitting on snow so we can do the farmland trick again. So just do a tick block in there. And then we're gonna get ourselves a piston right here. And let's get our button and our snow. And now we're sitting on three snow layers, which is exactly what we want. And we can get our soul sand, I mean not soul sand, farmland, which I already had in the inventory, but whatever. And zero tick this across. We can leave that for a second and we need to get one last minecart into this position right here. And we can do that like so. Just block there just in case. Okay, now that's in place we can remove this and that will fall. And then before we drop this minecart down, what we're going to do is just get a fence in here. This step's actually optional if you don't need the extra float to the side. You can remove all of this nonsense as well. And so now what we're going to do is push this minecart over. And it's going to drop off the soul sand and it's going to sit on the fence and that is so that we can then float it across like so i think that should have worked so and then we can drop it down by removing the fence so now we have all of these positions covered it will accept from here and deliver into here and even over from this side And there we go, that is a triple floated minecart allowing for all seven blocks to be placed. Um, obviously, if this can be higher, if anyone can be bothered to find a different setup for this, that'd be great. Uh, obviously, for the, just the one minecart, a wood skeleton is acceptable, but for, for when you need it to not suffocate, it becomes quite ridiculous. But yeah, that is this section of the video complete, and then we're going to go on to the next one. So in this next part of the video, we're going to go into a really particular and quite frankly, very unnecessary amount of depth about a certain subject. And that is that we're going to look at all of the different hip, uh, collision boxes contained within one hopper and how we can place minecarts sitting on as many of them as possible. So firstly, let's just get all of these hitboxes and put them in a little table. So if we look at these command blocks here, what they're going to do is tell me the position of the minecart and then teleport it down and it will then fall to the next collision box. And here we can see all of the collision boxes and they are basically every eighth plus one at 11 sixteenths for some reason. And then here it will just fall out of the bottom. And then we can do a similar process uh, horizontally to determine that there's one at every eighth without the 11 sixteenth horizontally. So that tells us all of those possible positions. Um, so what we're going to do is go in eighth by eighth to show to get to all of the different um, widths, and we'll look at the heights as they become necessary.
So one eighth is by far the easiest one, and it's the one that you'll have seen in all of my doors if you've watched any of my previous tutorials. And it comes down to the use of fence gates. So if I just quickly show it off, here you just want to place the minecart and then very quickly remove the rail as if doing a one tick pulse, like so. And then what you want to do is after this you can push it up using, for example, a soul sand. But we'll get into that for a second. Firstly, how does this work? Um, so obviously it's it's clear that what's happening is the minecart is going on the rail, sliding down and then sitting on top of the fence gate which is one and a half blocks tall. Um, but what's quite cool is how small the window is for this. So if we place the minecart on here, it places in the middle of the rail, and since this is at a 45 degree angle, it should be at um, 0.5. And we can see it is at 0.5, but plus a little bit, plus 0 0.0625. Now that is just the height, the extra height that the rail gives. So we can see it has a very small little window. So it has to move more than one centimeter across for it to even be inside the hopper, which will be that block. And then you have a five centimeter window or so before the minecart is then too low for it to even be on the fence gate because it will have clipped in, into the fence gate. So it's only got a five centimeter little window before it's gone too far down. And that's why this trick can only be used to access minecart placements at one eighth of the way into the hopper um, because by the time it's gone far enough into the hopper that it's had in the 2 8 section, it's now too low. But here we go, This we'll get onto that stuff later. So now it's actually clipped inside the hopper, we need to push it up, and we can do that at three different heights at this width level. We can do that at 11 sixteenths, 6 eighths, and 7 eighths. So to get 11 sixteenths, this is the hardest one, but it's also the most pointless. And beware that you can also get all of these heights using exactly the same methods at any other width level. So I'm just going to show them off once. So 11 sixteenths is a bit annoying, but what you want to do is get a campfire like so. I'm just going to put it out because I don't like the particle effects. And then place a boat. And then we want to push this up. And the hitbox of the boat will stop it. And then we can remove that fence gate. And we can see that it is at, um, the Y level is at 0 0.6875, which is 11 sixteenths. And then to get it at uh, 6 eighths, obviously you don't have to have done the previous height trick for this to work. You can do this straight from the fence gate. 7 eighths is, uh, 6 eighths is done with a slab. See now it's at 0.75, and then to get it to the next one, you just want to push it up with a soul sand or something like that. Now the chances are there's not really ever going to be any differences between the heights, but this is not really an exercise in anything practical. It's more just uh, because you know because why not? Now then of course we have uh, all of the different possible positions in the other axis. Firstly, I'm just going to push it over because currently it's not it won't be in precise location so there we go didn't make much difference but that's pushed in all the way to one eighth so now we're gonna look at all of the other or all, all of the possible positions we can place it in the second horizontal axis so to push it one eighth over the easiest method to do that is with trapdoor and then of course what we can do is to make it be precisely on the eighth is we can push it back but this is more just it's a bit pointless so that is at one eighth to go to two eighths what we want to do is push it into a wall with an ordinary block Is that two eighths to go to three eighths? We want to push it into a fence, slightly smaller hitbox. Um, to get it to half, what we want to do is um, push it into 
a stair now because we've done these other ones we need to first just push this across with a zero tick see there it's that oh does that push over yeah it did yeah so now it's at a half now if your minecart is too low so that it would actually just collide with uh, with this, what you can actually do instead of a, a stair is to use a um, a wither skeleton skull or any other skull, which is the only block which is like, uh, other than the stair, which is exactly half a block across. But yeah, that's what that is. Now to get it to five eighths, we're going to start repeating ourselves, but kind of in reverse. So now we're going to push it with a fence rather than into a fence, and then to get to the next one, we push it with a wall. So yeah, excuse that cut there, I just made a bit of a mistake. So to get 7 eighths, what you want to do is then push it with something like a honey block. And that there will uh, get it into the 7 eighths position. And yeah, those are all of the horizontal positions. Now, those will, all those same methods will work for the other ones. Although for some of the later sections where we're in low, lower sections of the hopper, we won't be able to go all the way to those edge ones because obviously this my car here wouldn't be able to balance at that level on there just because there's no hitbox there but yeah so that's one eighth next we're going to go on to two eighths and three eighths which are very similar so for two eighths and three eighths they use effectively the same method um, but it needs to be different from one eighth due to the reason i said earlier about the fence gate and now basically the solution to that is we just need a hitbox that's slightly lower than the fence gate so that the minecart can fall go further down the rail and still be able to sit on that hitbox and what we're going to use is a secondary minecart that's sitting on top of a slab so we have a slab which is 0 0.5 plus a minecart that's 0 0.7 so that puts it all the way at 0 0.2 now when we put another minecart on top of that that will be at um, 0 0.9 and that places the minecart the, the second minecart very slightly above the po the lowest possible position since hang on we'll get on to that in a second when it's a, when I'll be able to show you with a bit more visual aid so I just want to push this across so it's right in the middle without using a zero tick by accident like so and just place this on all sides so then what we can do is push a and we can get the minecart in there if you leave it too long it will do that so that's gone all the way in, so now that's actually going to be in the 3 8 position. The difference between getting it in the 2 8 and 3 8 position is just how long you wait to remove the rail, and that just comes down to feeling it, really. So, just in case, I think it's gone all the way to the end, but just in case we can just push this. Yeah, it has. So we can take the position of this. And that has put it at 3 8 of the way in. Uh, and then... When it comes to this we can then push this up just in exactly the same ways that we did before except now we actually have uh, not at two eights but at three eights we have access to three new positions so that's that three eights of the way up four eights of the way up and five eights of the way up um so as i mentioned earlier we can only just push this up so the lowest possible position where we can push it up is basically so long as the top of the minecart is below 0 0.875 of block because that's where there is a collision box um, so and this is at 0 0.9 so that's 0 0.025 of a block above the lowest possible limit there's no reason to try and remove those 0 0.025 because to get to four eights we need to use a whole different method so yes let's access those new height levels so to get to three eights what you want to do is get a soul sound you can just do that here and we want to give this a one game tick pulse now by far the easiest way of doing this is with a torch you might think this is a two game tick pulse but due to the input bug that's present in minecraft it only gives a one game tick pulse and basically what this means is that the the soul sound will well due to how pistons work it'll push up and as soon as that one tick game one game tick pulse finishes the, the the block would teleport to the top and stop pushing the minecart any higher. So now we can take the position again. You can see it's at 375, so that's 3 8. 
to get it to four four eighths or one half. This one's quite easy. I'm sure you can imagine what it is. We're just going to push it up with a slab, like so. Now that's a 0.5. And to get it to um, 5 eighths, we want to push it up into an end rod with an ordinary block. And yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to go on to putting a minecart four eighths of the way into a hopper. And now this is by far the hardest of the set because we need to make it so the minecart has gone far enough into the hopper so that it is um, uh, into the fourth segment, but not so far down the rail that it is uh, um, that it is too low that it can no longer be pushed up anymore because of the upper hitbox of the hopper. And as it turns out, there's actually a very very small little um, section of rail where it fulfills both of those criteria so if we just look at the height value because the height and the horizontal value are proportional um, it needs to be um, above 0 0.175 but below 0 0.1775 um, so that's a very very small thing but that will give us that will put the minecart in the right position to be able to be put into the fourth eighth of the hopper then once we are once the minecart is in that position, we have the problem of how to push it up because we can't um, just use a piston because it's on a rail. As soon as we move the rail, it will start falling, and that creates a, a big problem. How can we even push it up? And the solution is to use a shulker box. So we can see here, if we turn on hitboxes, we can see that when we open the shulker box, the hitbox of the minecart is moving. And that's not actually a client side error that's uh that's actually it is actually moving but then being clipped back down onto the rail and we can take a look at this using this little setup here so this command block here um, will print the exact position of the minecart into the chat um, and it will start whenever when i open this shocker box um, from this arm stand and we can see that here and we can see here we start at 0 .0, uh, 0 0.176 which is in that range and that then will get pushed up to a maximum of 0 0.51 and then it will clip immediately back down and the, these observer powers ones here will get into it into it later so obviously then the problem is that the the minecart will clip down to the uh, rail again but if we remove the rail while the shulker box is pushing up which is very possible, then the the minecart won't be able to clip back down onto it, so it will maintain its height change, which is how we're going to make this work later. But first, we have a more important issue, and that is how to get a minecart into that exact height position. And this will actually, as you can tell by these two setups, vary depending on the direction. Okay, so if we have, if we're facing, actually, let's let's do east-west first, it's a bit easier. What you want to do is place your chest minecart here. You want to get a furnace minecart, which pushes a minecart slightly further. I'll go into, I'll do a little cut in here, showing the different velocities of these minecarts, whatever. So we want to push down with a furnace minecart, and then push up with a chest or hopper minecart. And now we can see the height is at um, 0 0.176, which uh, is within the range that was specified before. Now for the um, north-south direction, it's a little bit more complicated. So for a start, we need two power rails rather than just one. And it's important that it is one for east-west and two for north-south. So you want to get two minecart chests there, then a minecart furnace, then a minecart chest, and then a regular minecart. And that will place it again within that range. But you can see at a slightly different height, but it's within the range, so it's fine. Okay, next, here's just a demonstration of how we're then going to pull the minecart up. So, we are using this observer to detect when the chocolate box is opened and that will push, that will pull the rail out of place. So what you want to do is open it and close it again and there you can see it sitting at a height. Um, and you can see that is the height there. It's at 2.5 and so from this height we can then push it up by getting a soul sand 
or whatever we want in this position. And of course, it's not actually 4 eighths of the way in yet, but we can rectify that just by pushing it. And now it is actually 4 eighths of the way in. So that's cool. Now, a lot of the time when we're using these minecarts indoors, they're actually in observable stores just because of the way redstone works. And if, if you're being really picky about it and don't want to use an observer for the, even for the method of placing this minecart, don't worry, it is possible to do without. This is my preferred method. And it's using what I like to call a little observerless observer because opening a shulker box doesn't actually give block updates. So what we're going to do instead is this little method here, which creates this floating sand. Because if you have a sticky piston retracting slime blocks that it can't pull, the head doesn't actually give any block updates at all, which means this sand will float. And since it's in, in an invalid position, the um, shulker box opening will, um, will actually update it even though it wouldn't update like a piston or something. And this works in an identical method. And so there, once again, if we do that, we can see it's at 2.5 and we can do the same treatment to push it into the correct position. So now, um, why might one want to put a minecart in this position? I'm not doing too much on context on these, but there's a cool little feature you can do with this. And it's this right here. And basically this has been pushed up into a soul sand and that gives this position to my card to go underneath it which is cool and um, it's far enough into the hopper more than halfway that the um, the minecart won't clip down onto a rail so this is the only way you could actually have a setup like this work without that minecart in the hopper clipping back down onto the rail so I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of building one from scratch just since I did it in parts earlier and we're going to go one in the north-south direction just to make it a little bit harder. But of course you're doing east-west. I did the method earlier. So here. Yeah. Our hopper is going to be here. Um, like so. And this here just has to be a slanted rail. So chest, chest. Furnace minecart, chest minecart, regular minecart, and just to check, we can if you, you can see there, at our, our minecart height is correct. Then what we're going to want to do is get our observer, which is going to pull that out, like so. And you can put that any height, and then obviously after this has gone it can go all the way up to 0.5 after that you can then apply the methods we said earlier to put this at any height you want so yeah and if you just let it fall it will go on to the lowest 0 0.125 height which is obviously as we discussed earlier useless but yes that is getting the minecart into the 4 eighths position in a hopper so that's all I wanted to show in this video. Obviously this is only the scratching the surface of what can actually be done with these minecarts. And if anyone has a more specific thing they need in context in a door, I'd be more than happy to help if you hit me up on Discord. Um, people do this actually quite often and I quite enjoy it. So if it's a challenge, I'll give it a go. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to leave a comment and like and subscribe and remember to take advantage of the eat out to help out schemes. <laughs> Cheers Bojo for the free food. Peace out bruv. And to my many followers, I love you. <laughs> Hello, this video is in collaboration with Arma28 but today it is the fabulous Arma27 hosting. <laughs> I am not only one better but I'm also divisible by three and nine. <laughs> and I am a cube. I'm a cubed number.